Law 15. Crush your enemy totally. Judgment. All great leaders since Moses have known that a feared enemy must be crushed completely. Sometimes they have learned this the hard way. If one ember is left alight, no matter how dimly it smolders, a fire will eventually break out. More is lost through stopping halfway than through total annihilation. The enemy will recover and will seek revenge. Crush him, not only in body, but in spirit. Transgression of the Law No rivalry between leaders is more celebrated in Chinese history than the struggle between Xiang Yu and Liu Bang. These two generals began their careers as friends, fighting on the same side. Xiang Yu came from the nobility, large and powerful, given to bouts of violence and temper, a bit dull-witted. He was yet a mighty warrior who always fought at the head of his troops. Liu Bang came from peasant stock. He had never been much of a soldier and preferred women and wine to fighting. In fact, he was something of a scoundrel, but he was wily, and he had the ability to recognize the best strategists keeping them as his advisers, and listened to their advice. He had risen in the army through these strengths. In 208 BC, the king of Chu sent two massive armies to conquer the powerful kingdom of Qin. One army went north, under the generalship of Song Yi, with Xiong Yu second in command. The other, led by Liu Bang, headed straight toward Qin. The target was the kingdom's splendid capital, Xian Yang, and Xiang Yu, ever violent and impatient, could not stand the idea that Liu Bang would get to Xian Yang first and perhaps would assume command of the entire army. At one point on the northern front, Xiang's commander, Song Yi, hesitated in sending his troops into battle. Furious, Shi Young entered Sung Yi's tent, proclaimed him a traitor, cut off his head, and assumed sole command of the army. Without waiting for orders, he left the northern front and marched directly on Shi and Yang. He felt certain he was the better soldier and general than Li Yu, but to his utter astonishment, his rival, leading a smaller, swifter army, managed to reach Shi and Yang first. Xiang had an advisor, Fan Tseng, who warned him, This village headman, Liu Bang, used to be greedy only for riches and women, but since entering the capital, he has not been led astray by wealth, wine, or sex. That shows he is aiming high. Fan Tseng urged Xiang to kill his rival before it was too late. He told the general to invite the wily peasant to a banquet at their camp outside Xian Yang and, in the midst of a celebratory sword dance, to have his head cut off. The invitation was sent. Liu fell for the trap and came to the banquet. But Xiang hesitated in ordering the sword dance, and by the time he gave the signal, Liu had sensed a trap and managed to escape. Bah! cried Fan Sang in disgust, seeing that Shi Yong had botched the plot. One cannot plan with a simpleton. Liu Bang will steal your empire yet and make us all his prisoners. Realizing his mistake, Shi Yong hurriedly marched on Shi and Yang, this time determined to hack off his rival's head. Li Yu was never one to fight when the odds were against him, and he abandoned the city. Shi Yong captured Shi and Yang, murdered the young prince of Qin, and burned the city to the ground. Liu was now Shi Yang's bitter enemy, and he pursued him for many months, finally cornering him in a walled city. Lacking food, his army in disarray, Liu sued for peace. Again, Fan Sang warned Shi Yang, Crush him now. If you let him go again, you will be sorry later. But Shi Yang decided to be merciful. He wanted to bring Liu back to Chu alive and to force his former friend to acknowledge him as master. But Fan proved right. Liu managed to use the negotiations for surrender as a distraction, and he escaped with a small army. Xi Yang, amazed that he had yet again let his rivals slip away, 
once more set out after Li Yu, this time with such ferocity that he seemed to have lost his mind. A few weeks later, in the thick of the hunt, Shi Yang scattered his forces unwisely, and in a surprise attack, Li Yu was able to surround his main garrison. For the first time, the tables were turned. Now it was Shi Yang who sued for peace. Li Yu's top advisor urged him to destroy Shi Yang, crush his army, show no mercy. Making a false treaty, he lured Shi Yang into relaxing his defense, then slaughtered almost all of his army. Shi Yang managed to escape. Alone and on foot, knowing that Li Yu had put a bounty on his head, he came upon a small group of his own retreating soldiers and cried out, I hear Li Yu Bang has offered one thousand pieces of gold and a fief of ten thousand families for my head. Let me do you a favor. Then he slit his own throat and died. Interpretation this is the fate that faces all of us when we sympathize with our enemies, when pity or the hope of reconciliation makes us pull back from doing away with them. We only strengthen their fear and hatred of us. We have beaten them and they are humiliated, yet we nurture these resentful vipers who will one day kill us. Power cannot be dealt with this way. It must be exterminated, crushed, and denied the chance to return to haunt us. This is all the truer with a former friend who has become an enemy. The law governing fatal antagonisms reads, Reconciliation is out of the question. Only one side can win, and it must win totally. Liu Bang learned this lesson well. After defeating Xiong Yu, this son of a farmer went on to become supreme commander of the armies of Chu. Crushing his next rival, the King of Chu, his own former leader, he crowned himself emperor, defeated everyone in his path, and went down in history as one of the greatest rulers of China, the immortal Hang Gao Tzu, founder of the Han Dynasty. Keys to Power It is no accident that the story illustrating this law comes from China. Chinese history abounds with examples of enemies who were left alive and returned to haunt the lenient. Crush the enemy is a key strategic tenet of Sun Tzu, the 4th century B.C. author of The Art of War. The idea is simple. Your enemies wish you ill. There is nothing they want more than to eliminate you. If, in your struggles with them, you stop halfway or even three-quarters of the way, out of mercy or hope of reconciliation. You only make them more determined, more embittered, and they will someday take revenge. They may act friendly for the time being, but this is only because you have defeated them. They have no choice but to bide their time. The solution? Have no mercy. Crush your enemies as totally as they would crush you. Ultimately, the only peace and security you can hope for from your enemies is their disappearance. <laughs>